I spent a lot of years around the issues of, of development, development economics, growth in developing countries. And I don't think there's any question that that is an issue of enormous importance, not just to the countries involved, but to the global economy. And similarly, I think that entrepreneurial development is integral to any effective growth strategy in a developing country. So the work that you do, the work that Endeavor does in providing technical assistance, mentoring, and the rest is enormously important. And it seems to me that it's never been more important than it is in the extraordinarily difficult, complex, and uncertain environment that we face today with the globe's financial and economic crisis. The current crisis is, at least in my view, one of four sets of challenges that the United States and in some varied every economy in the world faces. These four are, one, the present crisis, two, the possibility that the fiscal and monetary measures that are absolutely necessary to address the crisis could adversely affect our bond market and our currency market while the crisis is still going on and thereby piling on top of the crisis those additional adverse effects. Three, the risk, even after the crisis is over, of inflation and serious fiscal difficulties unless the macroeconomic policies that were absolutely necessary to deal with the crisis can be effectively unwound once our economy is on a healthy track again. And four, although I'm not going to discuss this today in, in the interest of time, the long-run questions of what fundamental changes are likely to occur in our economic model and our economic policy regime, either as a result of the crisis or for other reasons. And secondly, how well will we, and the same question applies to every country in the globe, how well will we meet the challenges for economic success in what is truly an historic transformation of the global economy that has been underway now for quite some number of years. I think the most important set of changes in the global economy since the Industrial Revolution. The powerful new technologies, global integration, the rise of China, India, Brazil, and so many other emerging market countries, the massive transfer of wealth to oil producing nations and trade surplus countries, and so much else. Let me now turn to policy with brief comments on the four areas, if you will, that have been addressed in the United States. Number one, I don't think there's any question that we needed a massive fiscal stimulus in order to create economic demand. We all might have different judgments as to exactly what the components of that stimulus should have been, but the politics of stimulus, at least in our political system, are always very difficult. And the, quite, the key was to move quickly and to move with an effective program. I think that was accomplished. Secondly, amelioration of mortgage foreclosure is exceedingly important in policy response because of the effect on housing prices, on the financial system, on consumers, and very importantly, maybe I would say most importantly, because of the effects on families around the country and the enormous hardship that foreclosure has created. The administration has put out a program. It's been well received by many commentators, and it's now beginning to have effect. What the total, what the total effect will be, only time will tell. Thirdly, in our financial system, we need our financial markets to return to normalized conditions, and we need greatly increased credit availability to our banking system, and very, very importantly, to our shadow banking system. That is to say, to the bond market, commercial paper securitization, and the rest. And to some extent, that has begun to happen, but it's still far, far for short of where it needs to be. There are no easy answers to accomplishing the purposes that need to be accomplished in our financial system. The administration has put forth a program. I think it's a sensible program, but only time will tell what effect it has. Let me just mention one issue that is absolutely central to addressing issues in the financial system. It is hugely consequential, it is hugely controversial, and it is hugely complex, and that is this question of how do you think about pricing assets. There's one point of view, which all of you are familiar with, which says that all, price as all assets should be priced at market clearing prices. There is another view that says that market clearing prices may very well be the appropriate price for a liquid asset in a trading account, but that the value of assets and changes in the value of assets are much more accurately measured by either present discount, some variant of present discounted value, 
or perhaps some variant of the reserve accounting that banks do. And that's particularly applicable to the assets that financial institutions, lending institutions hold in their so-called accrual accounts, where they extend three, four, five-year loans, and also to private equity, where there is no, there is, is no liquid market. This question of pricing may sound like an arcane matter, but it is absolutely central to the policy response to the problems in the financial area. The difficulties around it, I, think of, I don't think there's any question, have held up response, and how well or how badly that issue is addressed, that I think is going to very materially affect how effective response to the financial problems in our financial system turns out to be. Fortunately, as I said earlier in my remarks, I do think we have a, an outstanding economic team, an economic team that thinks about these issues with full recognition of the enormous complexity around them. Fourthly, policymakers have to decide what industries other than the financial industry should involve, should, uh, involve government engagement. And as you know, the auto industry so far is the only major industry in the United States that that's been the case with respect to. In all of these areas, it is possible we will need additional measures. And that we'll only know over time. If we do, the politics of that, unfortunately, seems to be, I don't know, seems to be, <laughs> is getting increasingly difficult. And hopefully, what's been done will be sufficient so that we can move back onto a healthy track over time. 